video explains how to read and interpret the AgriProfits Cow-Calf Enterprise Economic and Physical Performance Analysis using an example of the report. In particular, it explains what is covered by the Cow-Calf Report, why this is important, and how to interpret the report information. The video concludes with a summary of key takeaways and contacts for any further assistance. The cow-calf enterprise is the first stage of beef production that includes backgrounding and finishing. This stage is comprised of breeding, calf rearing and weaning at approximately six months to eight months of age. The weaned calves are the major product for a cow-calf enterprise and the AgriProfits reports summarize all sources of revenue and expenses to produce and sell those calves. The generated indicators in terms of calf sales, different types of costs and economic performance allows producers to examine the efficiency of production practices and methods. The cow-calf reports provide a wealth of physical performance information such as pregnancy, calving and calf crop rates that are critical to understanding the drivers of cow-calf profitability. These indicators can be compared with other producers and benchmarks to get additional insights. Also, financial institutions might need this information to negotiate loans or other forms of investments. The Cow-Calf Report consists of two parts, economic and physical performance. We will start our overview with the economic report. The economic report consists of four sections, revenue, production costs, efficiency measures and investment. Let's examine the revenue section using an example of the Cow-Calf Enterprise Report. The report expresses the results in total dollars, dollars per cow, percent to total, and dollars per pound. Expressing value on a unit basis is important for comparison with benchmarks as well as with market prices. We can see that the sales of weaned calves is the major source of revenue, 77%, and accounts for about $1,075 per cow. Income from the sales of breeding herd cattle is significantly lower, 16%, or about $222 per cow. Receipts from participating in government programs account for about 1%, or $9 per cow. In this example, the revenue also increased due to the growth of the value of the cow-calf livestock inventory, $75 per cow, or about 5%. This suggests that this producer is building his operation, as the closing year values are greater than at the start of the year. The revenue section also reports the cattle purchases, which are subtracted from the revenue. In our example, they are $325 per cow. In total, this cow-calf enterprise generates about $1,064.31 per cow, or $2.12 per pound weaned. So how good is this? One way to answer this question is to compare these results with the AgriProfits cow-calf benchmarks for the corresponding year. For this example, the comparison shows that the producer's revenue is higher compared with that for the benchmarks by about 5.5%, mostly due to cattle inventory. The producer's weaned calf income is actually lower than the benchmark by about 3.3%. Because per pound calf sales are consistent with the benchmarks at $2.14 per pound, this suggests that physical performance needs to be examined to determine the sources of lower weaned calf sales on a per cow basis. Let's look at the producer's costs, starting with variable costs. They comprise of feeding, grazing, medical, labor, and other costs that directly relate to the level of production. In this example, the winter feeding cost is $368 per cow, or 46% of variable costs. Grazing cost is about $241 per cow, or 30% of variable costs. Together, winter feeding, grazing costs and bedding account for almost 78% of the variable costs and are the major driver of economic efficiency. The second largest source of the variable cost is labor, both paid and contributed. In our example, it accounts for about 7% or $55 per cow. Unpaid labor is an opportunity cost that must be recognized as it contributes to the cost of production. Other variable costs include veterinary and medicine, breeding, trucking and marketing, fuel, repairs, utilities, custom work and operating interest paid. 
In this example, these costs are estimated to be $118.83 per cow, or about 15% of variable costs. Next, let's look at the fixed costs. It's called fixed because it does not depend on production level. Examples of fixed costs are cattle lease payments, property taxes, insurance, depreciation, and paid capital interest. In our example, the depreciation cost is a major contributor, accounting for about 69%, or about $51 per cow. Note that the depreciation cost accounts for both buildings and machinery used for the cow-calf enterprise. Total production cost is the sum of related, variable and fixed costs. In our example, it is $876.18 per cow. Let's compare it with AgriProfit's cow-calf benchmarks to determine how it stands up against other producers. In our example, the producer's total cost is slightly higher than the benchmarks by 0.8%. This is mostly due to higher feeding costs, about 8.5%, which takes the largest portion of the production cost. Unpaid labor, however, is lower than the benchmarks by about 15.1%. Let's look at the resulting economic efficiency measures in terms of gross margin and net return and compare them with the AgriProfits benchmarks. Gross margin is the amount left from revenue after you account for all cash costs. The report expresses the gross margin in terms of the market value and farm cost. Gross margin at farm cost adjusts the gross margin estimates for feed that is homegrown. In this example, the enterprise generates $278.13 per cow. This amount is available to cover depreciation costs, pay principal payments, and for owners' withdrawals. The net return for this cow-calf enterprise is $188.13 per cow, or $0.37 cents per pound weaned. This is the profit after all costs, variable, fixed, and capital are paid. Looking at the AgriProfits cow-calf benchmarks, we can see this producer outperforms the provincial average by 17.4% and 34.3% for the gross margin and net return respectively. Additional revenue per cow of $55.41 and greater cost of $7.37 per cow resulted in the higher margin of $48.04 per cow on our example farm. In addition to the economic analysis, AgriProfits provides the Cow-Calf Physical Performance Report. It's designed to help producers identify management practices that contribute to profitability. The Physical Performance Report consists of three main sections, breeding and gestation information, cattle feed usage, and physical performance and gold indicators. Let's briefly examine each of them. The breeding and gestation section provides breeding performance results, including the start date of breeding for both cows and heifers, and the length in days for completion and calving periods. The average length of the breeding period in our example is 96 days, which is longer than the benchmarks by 6 days. The length of the calving period is also longer than the benchmarks, 7 days. Other physical performance measures include conception rate, the number of bred females per exposed females, calving rate, the number of live births per bred females, weaning rate, the number of weaned calves per live births, and the calf crop rate, which is the number of weaned calves per exposed females. Comparing these indicators with the AgriProfits benchmarks, we can see they are slightly inferior to the AgriProfits cow-calf benchmarks by about 0.5 to 1.5 percentage points. The calf crop rate summarizes the whole production process and is especially important for understanding and interpreting the economic results. In our example, it is lower than the provincial benchmarks by about one percentage point. Now let's look at the feed usage section. It provides information separately for winter feeding and grazing periods. The winter feed use is reported by feed ingredients in terms of market value in dollars per tonne and feed use in total tons as fed, amount per cow as dry matter, and the amount per cow per day and per animal unit on as fed and dry matter basis. In our example, the winter feeding period for this herd is 191 days, or 12 days longer than the benchmarks. 
The total feed used on an as-fed basis is about 4.25 tonnes per cow, which is slightly lower than the agri-profits benchmarks. On a dry matter basis, the winter feeding consumption is 37 pounds per cow per day, or about 2.6% of her body weight. The dry matter feed intake is important to understand to control the feed costs. The producer needs to check the feed use data if dry matter intake is lower than 2% or higher than 4% of body weight. The feed usage section provides the information for winter feeding and grazing costs per cow and on an animal unit day basis. In our example, the daily winter feed cost is $2.29 per cow compared with $1.49 per cow on grazing, or 53% higher. Having this information, the producer might want to consider implementing extended or even year-round grazing if conditions allow. Keep in mind though that in this example, the farm reports cattle on feed for 12 days longer than the benchmark averages, 191 compared to 179 days. The females calved in the first two cycles shows the portion of cows calved in the first 42 days of the calving period. In our example, this indicator is about 83%, which is lower than the benchmarks by four percentage points. The larger the indicator, the smaller the weight variation of the weaned calves. So if the producer wants to decrease the weight variability of the weaned cattle, he might want to examine the cattle breeding practices used. At the bottom of the physical performance report are additional key performance measures, including the gold indicators. In this video, we will address several of them and direct you to the AgriProfits report interpretation notes for a more comprehensive discussion. The AgriProfits gold indicators address some critical areas of cow-calf physical performance, such as average weaning weight, portion of open cows, length of calving period, and calf death losses. These factors account for major sources of revenue and expenses and are important for understanding and interpreting the economic report. The weight of weaned calves along with the price determine the income from weaned calves. In this example, the average weaned weight is 536.67 pounds compared with the benchmark average of 588 pounds. There are many factors that contribute to the final weaning weights such as genetics, cow condition, calving date and feed quality. The producer might want to examine those factors in exploring ways to increase the calves weight gain performance. The open cows percentage shows the portion of exposed cows not inseminated during the breeding period. In our example it is 10.8 percent, meaning that 11 of each 100 exposed females were not inseminated. Maintaining open females during the production period is a drain on the farm's resources and can be reduced through strict following of good breeding practices. In our example, the portion of open females is 0.6 percentage points higher than the benchmarks. The last indicator we are going to cover in this section is calf mortality, death losses after 24 hours of age. In our example, the calf death losses are 3.9%, one percentage point higher than for the benchmarks. Death loss is another critical performance indicator that helps explain the cow-calf productivity and resulting income. Let's briefly summarize our example. We noted the producer has a higher revenue per cow compared with the AgriProfits benchmarks, 5.5%. This was mostly due to the increased value of the inventory. Lower per cow calf sales relative to the benchmarks was in large part due to the lower early cycle calving rate and also lower wean weights. Dollar per pound sales of the wean calves are similar to the benchmarks. The total costs are higher than the benchmarks mostly due to feed costs. The physical performance report indicates the producer has a longer winter feeding period compared with the benchmarks 12 days. Taking into account that the winter feeding cost is higher than the grazing cost by 53%, this producer might want to examine alternative cattle feeding methods. The resulting net return is higher than for the benchmarks, 34.3%, indicating a relatively good efficiency position, with some possible areas of improvements noted above. 
recall that an additional revenue of $55.41 per cow and a greater cost of $7.37 per cow resulted in the higher net return of $48.04 per cow on the example farm. This ends this module. For any questions or additional information, refer to the Government of Alberta Agriculture and Forestry landing page. AgriProfits links may be found under the Agriculture Business and Economics sections. You can also contact AgriProfits staff directly at 780-422-4088.